Taking the life of another human being is all but the worst of humanity. However, at times, such crimes aren't committed in rage or vengeance, but self-defense. Let's take a look at some criminals who claim their crime was done in self-defense. Number 6. Adam Matos One vote saved the life of a man convicted of brutally slaying his ex-girlfriend, her parents and her new boyfriend, in 2014. The jury found Adam Matos guilty on four counts of premeditated first degree. With one vote, the jury recommended that Matos live out the rest of his days behind bars. Ten out of twelve jurors voted for a penalty sentence in the slayings of Megan Brown, Greg Brown and Nick Leonard. For the slaying of Margaret Brown, 11 out of 12 jurors voted Matos to be sentenced to the gallows. Capital punishment must be unanimously decided by a jury, therefore that one vote spared his life. After hearing the jury's decision, family member after family member of the victims spoke about how the tragic passings have impacted their lives and the true devastation it has caused them. And we are here to pick up the pieces. You stole his whole world. There's not a single day that goes by that your son does not think about his family that lost. He loves his mother, he loves his grandparents, and he loves us. That he lost the hands of a murderer. You ruined his whole life. He does not love you. They spoke of how Matos had never once apologized or felt any remorse. During the trial, Matos admitted to slaying Megan Brown, Greg Brown, Margaret Brown, and Nick Leonard, but claimed that self-defense and paranoia led to the brutal quadruple homicide. Matos and Megan Brown shared a son who was four years old at the time of the homicides. According to Matos' testimony, the young boy, who has autism, was inside the home when Matos brutally slayed all four victims. The boy also remained in the bloody home with Matos for several days following the slaying. I didn't, I didn't know where to go. I didn't know what to do with them, so, so I attempted to put them in a bin. Um, I didn't want Tristan being exposed to all the blood and the bodies and the smell. I wanted to get the bodies away from the house where you took the bodies. Why was it so close to the house where you lived? I didn't want to leave Tristan alone for a long period of time, so I just picked a random spot. Where? I don't have anything to say right now. Where, where are, are you, you trying going? to go? I love my son and I hope that he's safe right now. No, you didn't, no, you kill, didn't kill them? No. Who did? I don't know. Why were you running away? Did you kill those four people? I don't have anything to say right now. Number five, Luke Van Amert. Luke Van Amert was sentenced to up to 50 years in prison for the slaying of a William Penn student. Van Amert was found guilty of crime in the second degree, a Class B felony that spring. He knived William Penn University student Marquise Todd in 2018. So hopefully this will start um, helping everybody not necessarily move on, but just help them with their grief. It also broke us down as students. We suffered emotionally, mentally, and everyone here was just hurting from it. I know there's a lot of people very upset and they were waiting to get some kind of answers to what happened. So many people told me how wonderful of a guy he was. He was always nice and smiling and it was just a shame to see something like this happen to him. Todd passed away as a result. During judging and sentencing on July 26, Van Amert was sentenced to an indeterminate term of incarceration not to exceed 50 years. That means he could serve the maximum possible sentence. The entire incident began with a car accident in March 2018, one in which Todd was not involved. Authorities concluded the fight took place the third time the car Todd was in returned to the scene of the crash. Which resulted in a physical altercation, which obviously, obviously then led to the stabbing incident. This all happened in regard to a minor traffic incident. The investigation at, to this point has not revealed anything relating to race. On the third occasion, they got involved with the other party. A jury took less than three hours to convict Van Amert after three days of testimony and two days of opening and closing statements this past April. During the trial, Van Amert's defense said he was acting in self-defense. It unsuccessfully asked the court to throw out the case, citing Iowa's Stand Your Ground law. Prosecutors pointed out that Van Amert said he threw the knife used in the knifing into a construction site, and it was never found. Testimony also showed Van Amert threw a piece of concrete at a passing car prior to the said crime, striking a passenger window. The court also ordered restitution totaling $150,000 to the victim's estate or heirs, in addition to fine, penalties and surcharges, and $1,645.50 in restitution to the state for the victim's autopsy. Van Amert is not eligible for bond on appeal.
Number 4. Daryl Bynes A man fatally shot a teenager who accidentally knocked on the wrong apartment door in Atlanta. It happened about 12.30 a.m. Friday at the Retreat Apartment Complex in southwest Atlanta, according to the station. Omarion Banks, 19, was dropped off by a lift near the wrong breezeway in the complex. Banks and his girlfriend had just moved to the complex and Banks wasn't familiar with the area. Banks was using FaceTime to talk with his girlfriend when he knocked on the door he thought was his. Shortly after, he walked away. The man inside, Daryl Bynes, 32, grabbed a gun and went onto his balcony to confront Banks. They said after a short conversation, Bynes shot him. Police said Bynes told them he shot Banks in self-defense. Banks's girlfriend, Zakiria Mathis, recounted what she heard over the FaceTime call. She said the whole thing was a misunderstanding, that her boyfriend took a lift home and must have gotten dropped off in front of the wrong breezeway and knocked on the wrong door. I'm sorry, I'm at the wrong door. And the man was like, nah, you hear him yell. And I heard all the fear in his voice and he was just, hear faint voices and a gunshot. And then I hear not at the wrong door. I can't, we, I can't see my child. You didn't care about his family. And now you, 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 you saying self-defense? You didn't care about his family. Your family can see, his family's going to see him. All you heard was him saying, I'm sorry, it was the wrong door. So he pleaded for his life. He was like, hold on, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And the dude shot him. I seen him running around the corner and... She said she then heard her neighbor tell her boyfriend, nah, expletive, you're not at the wrong house, before firing two more times. She ran downstairs to her boyfriend, who she said was lying in the grass. Bynes is charged with slaying. It's unclear if he has an attorney. Michaela Johnson, who identified herself as Bynes' cousin, told media the charge was unfair. He is an innocent father, Johnson said. He has five kids. His truck was stolen earlier this week. Right now, he's just trying to protect his family. Right now, that's all they're trying to do is protect their family. Although he has five kids, he was literally protecting his family. They truck has been stolen this week. Number three, Kyle Rittenhouse. Jurors in Kyle Rittenhouse's polarizing slaying trial agreed with the defense that the teenager acted in self-defense when he shot three people during protests in Wisconsin. But self-defense claims are rarely as clear-cut as they might appear. During two weeks of testimony, prosecutors and the defense painted opposing pictures of Rittenhouse, who was 17 when he slayed two men and injured another, as protests against police brutality erupted in Kenosha, Wisconsin, on August 25, 2020. Rittenhouse, in a rare move, took the stand in his own defense and said he opened fire because he feared for his life, slaying Joseph Rosenbaum, 36, Anthony Huber, 26, and wounding 27-year-old Gage Grosskreutz. I did what I had to do, he told the court. His attorney Mark Richards claims Rittenhouse was justified in his actions and that he didn't shoot at anyone until he was chased and cornered. Prosecutors say none of the men who Rittenhouse shot posed imminent threats. Instead, they say Rittenhouse lost the right to claim self-defense because he provoked the attacks and created his own danger when he brought a semi-auto rifle to the protests, crossing state lines from Illinois to do so. The Rittenhouse trial was the first major race-related case to reach a jury since former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin was convicted in April of slaying George Floyd. Rittenhouse and the three men he shot are all white, but racial injustice protests brought them together that night after a white Kenosha police officer shot Jacob Blake, a black man, two days earlier. Those kinds of circumstances might add pressure on a jury to reject a self-defense claim and convict, says Tully, who has won several self-defense cases. The political factors are the biggest factors, he says, adding that potential negative views about guns and the use of firearms for self-defense could also play a role. Kyle Rittenhouse was acquitted on all charges in the August 2020 shootings. The teen's attorneys argued that the teen opened fire in self-defense. Rittenhouse, 18, teared up and embraced his attorney as the not guilty verdict was read. The teen had faced five charges, including first-degree intentional homicide, which carries a sentence of life in prison. The jury, which was made up of seven women and five men, deliberated for three and a half days and heard from more than 30 witnesses over two weeks of testimony. The teen's attorney, Mark Richards, described how Rittenhouse felt leaving the courthouse. A huge sense of relief. He wished none of this would have happened. He is thankful the jury got to hear the real story, the true story. Number 2. Gabrion Keown A man charged with slaying was found not guilty by a jury. Gabrion Keown, G.K. Wells Lindsay, 23, was found not guilty of open slaying and felony firearms by a jury in Kalamazoo County Circuit Court. He was found guilty of carrying a concealed weapon, a charge his attorney said he was guilty of during the trial. 
The charges against Wells Lindsay stemmed from the fatal shooting of Alex Johnson around 1.26 a.m. on November 13, 2019. They both attended Loy Norick's high school and played basketball together. Wells Lindsay testified for more than 40 minutes on October 13, during a jury trial in Kalamazoo County Circuit Court before Judge Gary Jaguer Jr. He and his attorney, Michael Hills, argued the shooting was in self-defense. Wells Lindsay had been fighting with Johnson through text messages in the hours before the shooting. He said Johnson had been threatening him. Wells Lindsay testified he decided to fight Johnson and went over to his apartment. He said he decided to bring a gun because he knew Johnson carried a gun. Once he arrived at an apartment complex in the 4300 block of Hidden Hills Drive, he waited in a hallway until Johnson and Lamont Goodman came out of their apartment. Johnson then started yelling and screaming obscenities at him. He was also holding a gun, Wells Lindsay and Goodman both testified. Goodman said Johnson was handing the gun to him as the shooting started. Wells Lindsay said he saw Johnson start to move the gun from where he was holding it at his side. At that point, Wells Lindsay dropped into a squat, moved against a wall and pulled out the gun he had on the small of his back. He then started to shoot behind himself as he ran for the door. Number 1. Robert Bivens an Uber Eats driver who shot and slayed a customer he said threatened him will spend the rest of his life in prison. Robert Bivines shot Ryan Thornton as he made a delivery February 17. Thornton was a 30-year-old graduate of Morehouse University. Bivines claims that Thornton threatened him, which led him to shoot him multiple times in self-defense. Bivines was found guilty of malice slaying, aggravated attack, and attack with a fatal weapon. The jury took less than three hours to deliberate. The judge sentenced him to life in prison plus five years after Thornton's fiancée, Jerrica Jones, and several family members asked for the maximum sentence. Jones was with Thornton on the night he was slayed. Bivines was delivering food to their Buckhead condo and refused to bring the food upstairs. When Thornton went down to get it, he never came back up. Biven shot him four times and left the scene. Jones was the first to address the court after the verdict was read. She said that she doesn't believe in the penalty and asked for Bivines to serve his full term. Jones went on to say how much losing her fiancé has devastated her. Thornton's family members, on the other hand, had been in the courtroom for all four days of the trial and were furious he was trying to convince the jury the shooting was self-defense. Thornton's uncle also asked the judge to never let Bevines out of prison. Police said Thornton ordered food from Uber Eats and the driver delivered the food around 11.30 p.m. At some point, authorities said words were exchanged between Thornton and the driver. Thornton passed away at Grady Memorial Hospital. Bivines had only worked as an Uber Eats driver for a week. Uber has a no-weapons policy for its drivers. That's all for this video, folks. See you another time.